Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, I'll be showing you how to deploy a Node.js or Express application to Versal. If you're not familiar with Versal, Versal is a cloud platform that provides services for deploying web applications, and it offers various features to help developers quickly deploy, manage, and scale their applications. I'm going to first go over my Node.js application and the contents along with a configuration file that you'll need to add, which can be found from Versal's documentation, and then we'll push the code to a GitHub repository, which will be followed by us signing up on Versal and linking the repository to deploy our application. So without further ado, let's begin. So first I have an Express.js application that I created, and it only has one route that instructs the viewer to subscribe to this YouTube channel. And then for my port configuration, I have it set to process env.port um, if available, and otherwise it'll just default to port 8080 and once this app.listen function runs the server begins okay now I already assume that you have a complete application that's ready to deploy and since you're using Express you likely have some entry point for your backend and for me that is my server.js file located in my root directory now if you have this entry point nested in another folder that is also okay because shortly I'm going to show you how you can configure that in our Versal configuration file, which is what we're gonna work on. So now we're going to create a Versal.json configuration file, which is necessary to define how Versal should build, route, and serve our project, ensuring that our project is deployed and functions correctly in its environment. So to do this, I'm going to head over here and type in Versal.json to create the configuration file. And now I'm going to write the content for this file. And once I'm done writing, I'll explain to you what each part of it means. Okay, so in this Versal.json configuration, we're setting up a project for deployment on Versal using the latest version of its platform, which is what this version specifies here. And this version ensures that Versal uses the modern configuration standard. And then this builds key right here has these values. So it's going to essentially tell Versal how to handle our code during deployment, specifying that our entry point, which is this server.js file located in our root directory, which is also where our Versal JSON file is located, should be processed using the Versal slash node builder. And this builder optimizes our application to run as a serverless function, which scales automatically with traffic. And then the route section defines how incoming requests are handled. So here, the source and then forward slash period asterisks matches any request path and dest server.js routes those requests to the server.js file where your express app processes them. In the previous clip I mentioned that if you had a different entry point where it was nested within a folder that you could still run your application or deploy your application. So to adjust for that what we can do is just type in the path from our Versal configuration file to that entry point, the relative path. So if I were to have this server.js file within a directory called source, then I would just do source forward slash server.js in the build section and set that as the value for the source key. And I would also do the same in my dest here, okay? But since I just have my server.js file in my root directory, I don't need to do that. But if you have a nested directory that you placed your entry point in, then you should do that. So yeah, this Versal JSON file just ensures that Versal knows exactly where to find your application logic, making it easy to deploy any API quickly and effectively. So now that we have configured our Versal JSON file, um, I want to bring attention to our package.json. So in this package.json file, underneath this scripts section here, or in this scripts section here, uh, we typically would have a script to start our server and that would just be the node command and then it would be followed by the entry point um, to our application and for me that is the server.js file so I have node server. Now although this start script isn't strictly required by Versal in terms of deploying our application it is best practice to include 
some sort of start script that would call our entry point to start our server so that in case anything changes in the future, we have um, the start script to fall back on. Again, this isn't strictly required. It's just something that I prefer to do. And now that we have this completed, we're going to move on with creating our repository. So here in my GitHub window, I'm just going to type in the repository name, which I'm just going to name it as Express Versal Deployment. I'll set it to public and then I'll click create repository. And then upon creation, it's going to give us a list of commands to write. Now here, I'm just going to do git init to initialize an empty git repository within my application um, directory. And I also have a git ignore file um, that has node modules placed on the first line so that we do not push this node modules folder to GitHub because when we build our application Versal is going to install the dependencies itself. Okay. So make sure that you have the dot git ignore and make sure that you put node modules inside. And then once we've done git init, what I'm going to do is git add dot. And also if you have any environment variables that you're using for your application, you want to make sure that you store that env file within this git ignore as well by doing dot env followed by whatever suffixes it may have. But since I do not have a dot env, I'm just going to remove that line. All right. And then we'll do git commit first commit. And then I'm going to do git branch hyphen m main git remote add origin. And then I'm just going to copy and paste this link right here. And then we'll do git push u origin main. And then now if we refresh our repository page, you can see that we have our versal configuration file, our entry point package and package lock JSON files, along with the git ignore, which has ignored the node modules from being pushed here. And now we're just going to go to versal, sign up for an account, link this git repository and deploy our application. Okay, so to sign up for a versal account, you need to first navigate to versal.com in your web browser. And then once you're on this homepage here, you're gonna to navigate to the sign up link um, through that button and you will complete the registration process by answering a few questions and once you've completed the registration process you can log in using uh, one of these providers here now since I already have an account I'm going to log in and I'll show you what your dashboard should look like and how we're going to go about deploying our application all right so once you've logged in you should be greeted with a dashboard that looks similar to this now, if this is your first time um, deploying a Express project to Versal, but you've deployed other projects to Versal before, it may not look like this, but the general idea of how you're gonna follow along will be the same. So what we're gonna do is just click add new and then click project. And then here, since we pushed our project to our Git repository, we're just going to continue with GitHub because we need to import that uh, repository to Versal. And here it's going to ask you to sign in to GitHub using Versal. So once you do this, you should be able to give access to your repository for Versal to deploy. Once you've connected your GitHub account, you should be able to see a list of your GitHub repositories in this panel here. Now, since I have other repositories that are private, I've decided to blur them out. But the repository that we were working with was the Express Versal deployment. So what I'll do is just click import and we can assign a name to this project. You can choose this to be whatever you'd like. And then for the framework preset, it's fine if you leave it to other since Express and uh, Node.js isn't exactly an option here. So just leave it as other. And then the root directory for our project, I'm just going to leave it as the default period forward slash because the entry point to our server file is within the root directory of our project. So I'm just going to leave it as this. If your project has something else, you may specify that here. Then for the build and output settings, we're just going to leave these as is for right now. And for the environment variables, my project doesn't have any environment variables, but if yours does, then make sure to include them here so that your application can function properly. And then we can just click deploy. 
And if you give it a few seconds, it'll begin deploying and it will show you all the build logs as well as the deployment summary and everything else of that nature. And once it's been deployed, it'll say that you've deployed a new project to your projects and you can continue to your dashboard. And here um, you can click on this domains link and you're able to view your project online. And now that our project is online, we are done. Now you may be wondering what if you make updates to your application? When you make an update and push that update to GitHub, Vercel will deploy the latest commit so the latest version of your application is online. So that just about concludes this video. If this video was helpful, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below or send me an email and I'll do my best to get back to you. With that said, have a nice day and I'll see you in the next video.